So a little while ago, I did a video about what's on my iPhone, but now I have a brand new 2018 MacBook Pro. And honestly, I kind of care about what's on my Mac more. This is where the real work gets done. My job involves photography, video production, and since my wife and I run a freelance business, just running a business, which involves sending a lot of emails and collaborating on projects. I have a ton of applications to talk about here, so I'm gonna dive right in. But first, I wanna mention this video is brought to you by Setapp, which gives you access to a bunch of the apps that I'm gonna be talking about today. More on that later. Starting with photo production, Lightroom is kind of at the center of the whole operation. It's where I both manage my long-term catalog so that I can find photos later, and also where most of the color editing is done. Now, there are other competitors in this area. Capture One, for example, is an amazing piece of software, but I don't have time to move my whole collection over. I do feel really good about where Adobe is lately. As a professional, I don't mind spending the money on Creative Cloud, but for beginners, I could really see how spending that money is a tough pill to swallow, so it's worth looking around. There's some other great pieces of software out there. Let's talk about Photoshop for a second. I've been using this forever. It used to be that we would all pirate Photoshop before we could afford to buy it, and then we'd learn how to use it, and then after we got a job, we'd pay for it and it was like the center of how we did everything. Now there really are a lot of options to do the same thing. For example, Sketch has taken over a lot of the space where Photoshop used to own in the web design market. So what I think is going to start happening is a lot of people starting out are going to be using tools other than Photoshop and those tools may grow to be as powerful. But for now, Photoshop has everything that I need and I'm so used to the depth of its tools, I just I couldn't move away from it. It's a really powerful piece of software. But like I said, I can do most of my color editing inside of Lightroom and Photoshop is really only for like pixel by pixel manipulation if I'm cloning or liquefying or things like that. Continuing with the Adobe suite, I also use Audition, which is how I edit my podcasts. I really like Audition. It feels like it's made for editing radio shows. A lot of people also use Logic for this, which is a great piece of software. I like it too, but it is targeted more at musicians, so there's a lot more in there than I need when I'm just editing voice or like mastering audio for videos. But I really wish Audition would integrate better with Final Cut. For serious signal processing, so for example, noise removal, reverb removal, de click remover, like anything where I need to clean up a signal, I use Isotope RX6. It's pretty expensive as far as plugins go, but it's absolutely worth it. It works a lot better than Audition's built-in tools. After Effects, I keep installed on my machine, but I try not to need it too often because I'm pretty slow in it. So I like to use other people's pre-made motion presets since I'm editing in Final Cut most of the time. And quickly, let's touch on Premiere and DaVinci Resolve, which I keep installed in here, but aren't my primary editors anymore. If we go way back, I learned to edit on Avid in high school. And then from there, I went to Final Cut 7 since I was on a Mac. But when Final Cut Pro 10 came out, at first it was missing so many features that I felt like I needed to switch. So I was using Premiere and I was happy with it for quite a few years until I started to really feel it slowing down my process. Like the exports would take forever and I just saw how much faster Final Cut could be. So once Final Cut Pro 10.4 came out, they added some really powerful color editing tools and that's when I switched. So now I added almost exclusively in Final Cut Pro 10. But DaVinci Resolve has some incredible masking tools and the way that it edits color is insanely powerful. So if you are still looking for your first NLE, DaVinci is probably a great choice because it's free to get started. And Premiere is incredibly powerful. It can do some things that Final Cut can't. But if you're on a Mac, it's hard to argue with the optimization of Final Cut. It's just so much faster to work with. So those kind of three in one. Final Cut is my main choice for video editing. Resolve and Premiere, yeah, keep them around because other people use them. Plural Eyes is a way of syncing up audio and it's developed by Red Giant Software and I've been using it for a long time since when it was just an independent app. This is something you can do inside of Premiere and Final Cut. You can make it look at audio files and video files, sync them up, but Plural Eyes does a better job. I've definitely had times that Final Cut and Premiere just couldn't find the sync point and then Plural Eyes got it right immediately. Another developer I love is Rogue Amoeba and I use their audio hijack to record all of my remote podcasts. Basically, it turns your laptop into a mixer so that you can send different, well, not just your laptop, your desktop too. It turns your Mac into an audio mixer so you can send different signals across different apps and record them all and capture in different formats. It kind of does everything. It's really powerful. I love it. ScreenFlow, formerly known as ScreenFlow Pro, is a screen recording app. I use that for tutorials and stuff. In fact, I'm using it right now to show how this software works. 
That covers all the major production software. So next let's move on to some utilities that just kind of keep my Mac running. And this is a good time to bring up Setapp. So all these next apps are available within Setapp, which is a subscription service that allows you to have access to over a hundred of the best independent Mac applications. All these applications I actually purchased separately before finding Setapp. But now when I have a new machine, I can just instantly install all of them without going to the different developers' websites or worrying about purchasing upgrades. And also when I'm just looking to discover a new utility, I can check out what Setapp has to offer. So if you're interested, go to stpp.co slash Stallman. You can start a free trial today. So let's talk about Bartender. It's a very simple app, doesn't do a lot. It just takes all of the menu items in your top menu bar and hides them. So instead of having all this extra clutter up there, I have one icon that I can click to expand and then I see my missing menu items that I don't need to see most of the time. A lot of those extra icons come from iStat, which is a way of monitoring what my computer is doing at all times. I can see the CPU usage, the RAM, and just gives you a sense of what is happening inside of your machine. Before SSD hard drives, you could kind of listen to your spinning disk and have a sense of how hard it was working from that but these days iStat is my way to keep an eye on things. Back to my Mac is being removed from Mac OS. That's how you would log into other computers from remote locations. So now I do all of that with screens. It's incredibly seamless. It works as well as integrated software. I've been so happy with it. So when I'm on the road, even from my iPhone, I can log into my iMac back home and access files that I need. Another cornerstone piece of software, something that's crazy important, I might do videos about this on its own, is Chronosync. This allows you to do selective file syncing. So there's other backup apps like Time Machine or SuperDuper or Carbon Copy Cloner. They're more meant for backing up your whole hard drive. Chronosync will look at the differences between folders and only sync the differences and deletions. A good example of when I'd use it is, let's say I'm trying to sync my 2018 photos folder to an external drive. If I start copying that in Finder, it doesn't really keep track of the changes, and if the copy is interrupted at any point, I lose all my progress. Chronosync can be canceled and picked up at any time, and it remembers where it was left off, and it'll verify that all the files were copied correctly. There's also Clean My Mac. It can do some automated detection of kind of junk files that aren't being used to give you extra hard drive space. And I also like that it's kind of a universal uninstaller. So if you're removing any application, it can find all of the extra files and get rid of the whole thing. Trip mode, another utility that should be built into the OS. It detects when you're on a tethered Wi-Fi signal. So your bandwidth might be limited and then you can restrict access to the internet for specific apps. And those are all the ones I'm gonna mention from Setapp. Now for some more general utilities. Dropbox is something we all use, but I mean, I lean really heavily on Dropbox. It's how we collaborate with all of our clients and I absolutely find it worth paying for. 1Password is my preferred password manager. Uh, LastPass is also out there, but I, I like the way 1Password works. I've been using it for a long time. VLC, I install on every machine because it can play back any kind of video. It's it should just, everyone should have it. Whenever a hard drive is running out of space, I always run Daisy Disk, which will create a little chart showing how all of my data is being used. And then I can find folders or files to delete to find space. And finally, my calendar of choice is Fantastical 2, which lets you enter natural language as a way to create calendar items. So that's it. If you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Stallman, and I went into a lot more depth about this on the podcast. So go to stallmanpodcast.com for a lot more about Mac apps.